Hi, the job furlough scheme or the job retention scheme in the UK has come to an end today, or is coming to an end today, the last day, uh, with, with around a million people left in this, this scheme. Um, now, figures were, were banded around fairly recent, 600,000 were in the scheme, but now the figures come out that a million people are left on this scheme, which does leave me wondering why there are a million people who are paid a percentage of their salary by the government, not the government actually, the taxpayer, you and I paying taxes, they're using our money to pay people to sit at home watching Netflix when virtually 90% of the economy is actually open. Yeah, I know that some of the travel industry is not open and not everyone uh, is, is fully deployed and employed, but um, I, I, I do feel this scheme has maybe gone on a little bit longer. Apparently it's cost something like £70 billion, pounds, 70 billion. Now, you know what a billionaire is, right? They have that's someone with a thousand million pounds. There are not that many billionaires in the whole world, you know, maybe a few thousand at the most. Uh, so a billion is a lot of money. It would last, if, if you had a billion pounds, a billion dollars, euros, it would last you your lifetime, your, your children, your grandchildren, provided you could pass it on without taxes, it would last forever almost, you know. So when you think of 70 times that just spent on keeping people in jobs. Now, the scheme was brought in to, to avoid uh, companies who were told when, the, when they, the government, let's face it, shut the economy down or virtually all of it, that, you know, employers would have then said, well, we can't pay you. We're going to have to make you redundant and then you will have to go on benefits. So to avoid this, the governments here in America and, and, and in parts of Europe brought in this furlough scheme, which they call the job retention scheme. And that meant that employers could keep staff on. They didn't make them redundant. They didn't sack them, fire them. They kept them on the books. So they were technically employed. They were not unemployed, but their salaries were virtually being paid for by the taxpayer. I think the figure was 80%. It went down to 60%. Uh, so for people to sit at home on earning 80% of what they would normally get, and then they haven't have to travel into work, they haven't had to buy sandwiches at lunchtime and lunches and, and pay for childcare, it was great. So people have really enjoyed it. They've loved it. You know, Netflix are pumping out all these new movies. They're building new studios in the UK. Three new studios in Hertfordshire have been built to pump out this fodder to keep people happy to stay at home. Anyway, that's that's the way this it's, it's, it's helped 11 million people uh, just more or less stay at home. And one of the advantages of it, I guess, there is positives that it has uh, meant that people uh, have, have not lost their jobs so that the jobs are still there. The companies have not lost that that, that those employees, that talent. And I guess th th this this process was called it hasn't scraped these jobs away. So there's no scarring of, of jobs in, in industry. So, you know, as I said, 11.6 million people's wages were paid via a, a furlough scheme. This is a kind of a tax rebate system run by HMRC, who got it out very, very quickly. I, I don't know how they got it out so quickly, uh, whether they were preparing for this longer. But, you know, it, it has got um, got this stuff out. And obviously the, the sectors that have been affected worse, I guess, are the travel sectors and hospitality. Hospitality is only just about recovering now. Um, so that, that has helped these people and helped companies. Now, at the same time, uh, we, you know, we, we thought there would be mass unemployment at the end of this uh, furlough scheme. But it seems that there's still a million job vacancies out there. Uh, Read Employment have recently come out and said that they, their jobs online on the Read Employment site peaked 300,000 jobs just recently, the highest ever. Now, I remember Read when I was in, 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 in recruitment, Read had about two or 300, 200, 250 jobs actually actively online at that time. Uh, so now they've got just that one website, they've got 300,000 job vacancies here in the UK. We know that there are 500,000 people needed in the food industry, in agriculture, food processing, the kind of jobs that British people frankly don't want to do. So they bring people in from Eastern Europe, on, on some of them on the seasonal agriculture workers scheme. We also know that there's 100,000 shortage of truck drivers, these heavy goods truck vehicles that's causing food supply at the moment and fuel fuel supply, petrol shortages that the government said, well, there's no petrol shortage. But tell that to the people that I just saw down the road queuing up the road, you know, hundreds of, of metres up the road queuing to get into a petrol station. I had to do a three mile detour to get uh, to where I wanted to go because you couldn't pass certain 
pinch points where people were queuing for petrol. And this is apparently because of this driver shortage. But where did this come from? Where did this driver shortage just come from out of the blue? I know they said it's been brewing for years, but it does seem strange that, you know, right at the moment they talked about this, this driver shortage came out of nowhere. Uh, and so, so that's been going on. So will the people that are unemployed be able to dovetail into these jobs? Probably not, because... You know, if people are sitting around unemployed, they probably haven't got that many skills. Uh, they, they probably haven't got the specialist skills needed for, for many of these jobs. Um, but, you know, the economy is growing again. It grew by five and a half percent between April and June. Uh, so, yeah, of course, the economy will be growing because it's been shut down. So you're starting from almost a zero point And then they, 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 they base it on what people are out there spending. Of course, People have been desperate to get out and spend in restaurants and pubs and, and go, go places again. So naturally, the, uh, the economy will be, will be growing again. So they're treating this as a, as a great success. Uh, the same thing has been going on in America, where people are actually better off. They're, they're given money to stay at home, $32,000 a year, I believe, to, just to stay at home. Uh, so people are saying, well, great, I don't want to go to work. I'd rather have this money sent in through the post. Is this... It's just a theory here. Is this could this lead to some form of universal basic income as more and more jobs are replaced with AI, artificial in te artificial technology? Uh, could could that happen? I, I don't know. Um, they're already trialing driverless lorries in America, in Dallas. They have a trial of of driverless vehicles run by by FedEx from Dallas to Houston, a, a journey of several hundred miles, with a, with a truck that has no driver. In this case, they've got a safety driver in there just in case things go wrong. Um, now, this this could, if they brought this out, what you know, and FedEx are planning to use more of these trucks by 2022, 23. That could wipe out millions of jobs. Driverless Ubers are already uh, been trialed. You know, we have um, uh, driverless vehicles already running in China. Driverless buses. They're starting to trial those in in a number of cities. So this this could happen, and millions of jobs could be wiped out. Now, how is someone who drives a truck going to, to be quickly redeployed? Maybe they will have to be on some form of universal basic income, UBI. UBI is nothing new. It's been trialed in parts of Switzerland. It's been trialed in Finland. So could we be in a position where, you know, millions of people in the West are, are no longer employable and have some form of universal basic income to sit at home and watch uh, TV? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how people who, say, have been driving a truck for their, all their life are going to be redeployed into something to do with technology, for instance. Maybe some of them can be redeployed. Uh, the, the question is, what are you doing about it? How are you going to protect yourself and your family? Um, are you going to sit there and be like somebody who is dependent on someone else, like an employer, and say, like, at the moment, these people on furlough, I, I listened to an interview with someone today. She said, well, I didn't know whether they were going to make me redundant. And then they made me redundant, but then they changed their mind and, and decided they were going to keep me on. And you think, well, what a life to live. You know, it's a terrible way to, to be uh, living where you're dependent on the whims of an employer uh, to, to keep you employed or you're dependent on the whims of a big company that might decide, well, we're going to close that plant down in this country and move it over to this country because they're offering us a better tax break or they're offering us carbon credits or any other crap like that then, you know, you're, you're being pushed around like a pawn on the chessboard. Would you not rather have your destiny in your own hands and, and run your own ship? And that, that means financial independence. That means maybe running a home-based business or getting into something like a small property business or something that you control rather than being controlled by an employer. That's something you might want to think about um, and, and, you know, have a look at my, my information here on on. on you know, that I post up here. I post several courses you can do, several webinars you can attend to learn how to, to gain financial freedom, to learn how to, to do things for yourself uh, and maybe set up businesses for yourself so that you don't have to be dependent on employers for the rest of your life. Because the way it's going, it's, it's not looking uh, too clever out there unless you're in an industry that is, is bulletproof. Well, how many of those are there, are there out there? The safest people of all, of course, are usually government employees. Uh, they have uh, cast iron pensions, they have gold plated pensions and, and they have very secure income streams. But, you know, even governments are cutting back on people 
as as machines take over. And AI is not just affecting uh, manual type work. It's affecting blue. Uh, I mean, blue collar work. It's affecting white collar jobs in law and accountancy, in in all sorts of uh, uh, industries where you traditionally needed people to analyze stuff. Now machines can do that much faster. Even uh, stock picking and, and stock trading uh, is is there are fund managers who virtually do everything with with algorithms and computers now, and they have very good fund performance compared to uh, the average stockbroker that goes out at lunchtime, maybe gets drunk and decides you know they're going to sell off some stock. Uh, well, that maybe that doesn't happen. Maybe I'm exaggerating there, but you know they've got machines that analyze the market that can do it better than. Uh, an, an analyst earning a hundred thousand a year. So, so watch out, people. This this is coming, uh, and so so make sure you you look after yourself and and you're able to row your own boat. That's all I'm saying for today. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.